Hey folks, Coach Kevin from the Silver Edge here, and today I want to talk to you about progressive overload, and I want to start by telling you a story. So way back in ancient Greece, and I think it was about 6,000 BC, there lived this guy named Milo. He was Milo of Croton, and he was a bit of a rock star in his day. He was a superstar athlete, very, very famous uh, Olympian. He was a famous wrestler, just an all-around superstar guy, super, super strong. And the story goes like this. One day in the village where Milo lived, a calf was born. And every day, Milo would lift that calf up, put him on his shoulders, and he would walk. And he did this every day until one day he was no longer carrying a calf, but he was carrying a full-grown bull. All right, pretty simple story. You may have heard that before. It gets talked about a lot by personal trainers who like to demonstrate the principles of progressive overload. But there's a couple of things that we can take from this simple story. And the first is consistency. Milo carried his calf every single day. Now, I'm not advocating that you strength train every single day, but I am advocating for consistency, so for if you're a beginner lifter, maybe three times a week, a full body is fantastic, but keeping that consistency is part of the key to progressive overload. The other part of this story that's very interesting from a progressive overload standpoint is that Milo's load got a tiny bit heavier every day. So we might imagine this calf every day, maybe it grew by a pound or two pounds. And so when Milo lifted it, it was just a little bit heavier than the day before. And he kept doing that every day until of course he was carrying a full grown bull. And what we can take from this story is that same principle. We want to apply the principles of progressive overload. In other words, if we go into the gym and we do the same thing every single time, meaning every time we go to the gym, we do the exact same exercises, we do the same number of sets, the same number of reps at the same weight, we're not really progressing. Now, don't get me wrong, that's way better than being sedentary and not going to the gym at all. However, we're not really progressing, and that's what I wanna talk about in this video, is how do we progress in the gym? And then we'll talk a little bit about how we maybe overcome plateaus. But let's just start with the basics here. The most common way for us to apply the principles of progressive overload are either to add reps or add weight. And that typically looks like this. And let's just use dumbbell curls as our example here for progressive overload. Let's just say we come into the gym today and we've got dumbbell curls programmed for us and it's programmed three sets from 10 to 15 reps with a minute rest in between. All right, so we grab our appropriate weight dumbbells, we do our set of 10, we put them down, we rest for a minute, we pick them up, we do another 10, we rest for a minute, pick them up, do another 10. So next time we come into the gym and we have dumbbell curls in our program, we want to try and increase. And let's, in this case, we're just gonna increase by one rep. So we're gonna do three sets of 11. Remember last time it came up, we did three sets of 10. This time we do three sets of 11. We have the same rest period in between. Next time that exercise shows up, we're gonna do three sets of 13. Next time, three sets of 14. Next time, three sets of 15. Now, the next time that comes up, we might jump up and wait as opposed to keep going. We don't wanna continue just adding a rep forever. A, we can't, that's gonna, we're, you can't get infinitely stronger, unfortunately. Uh, but we also, once we get past 15 reps, now we're kind of getting out of that hypertrophy range, let's say, and we're moving into muscular endurance. So we want to back down to uh, 10 reps, but we're gonna choose a heavier weight. So now we've chosen a weight that we can only do 10 with perfect form of these bicep curls. And the next week, of course, we're gonna aim for 11, then we're gonna aim for 12. So that's, you get the idea. So the first way we can apply the principles of progressive overload, well, first two ways really, are we can increase the reps or we can increase the weight. And we probably don't wanna do both at once, but we just want that small incremental increase. And what this is doing is it's signaling our central nervous system that we need to build muscle in order to account for this increased work demand, right? We're, we're having a little bit more work. We're getting that extra rep every time we're in the gym. All right, so again, the two most common ways that we're going to apply the principles of progressive overload are to get that extra rep every time, and then when we get towards the top of that rep scheme, we're going to drop back down in reps and add some weight.
Another way we could do that, let's say we're going to use a deadlift, for example. If we're deadlifting, we come in, we have three sets of 10, and we do those, say, at 135 pounds. Next time we come in, as opposed to doing three sets of 11, something like a heavy compound lift, like a deadlift, we might add five pounds on. So just slap two little two and a half pound plates on each side. So now we're at 140 pounds. Next week we come in, we do three sets of 10 with 145 pounds. You get the idea. We can add five, maybe 10 pounds, especially as we're just starting out, we're probably adding 10 pounds each time. And then as it starts to get heavier and heavier, as we get more advanced, we're probably adding a, a smaller amount. So a couple of ways that we can manipulate progressive overload. And another way we can add progressive overload is, of course, to add sets. So in our example, where we started, we said we were doing three sets of 10 to 15 of bicep curls. We could always do four sets of 10 to 15, and we could even go up to five sets of 10 to 15. So different ways to manipulate this. So another way that we could manipulate progressive overload is to decrease the rest time. And especially for those of you maybe that don't pay attention to your rest time in between sets, and hint, you should, make it a habit to start timing your rest period. So if you've been, you know, you're scrolling on your phone in between sets, maybe you're resting two, three minutes in between sets without even realizing it, Set a timer on your phone, keep those rest periods consistent, keep them short, especially if you're working in that 10 to 15 rep range, eight to 12 rep range, you probably only need about a minute of rest in between. Those of you that are working in heavier weights, you're working in three, four, five reps, you probably want two to three minutes of rest, but you still wanna have a timer and you wanna keep track of that. So one way we could manipulate progressive overload is to decrease those rest periods between sets. Okay, so those are the most common ways that we can apply the principles of progressive overload, but there's a couple others that I want to mention that I think have a lot of value, especially as you move from, say, that beginner lifter into more that intermediate lifter. And let's start here. One great way to manipulate progressive overload is to increase your range of motion. So let's just take a squat. Let's say you're used to doing your barbell squat, or we'll just use air squats in this example. You're doing three sets of 10, three sets of 12, three sets of 15. And now, as opposed to going to three sets of 16, let's say your squat is right in here. You're almost parallel as opposed to going to three sets of 16, three sets of 17, or maybe throwing a barbell on your back, let's go back to three sets of 10, but let's get a little more depth. Let's work really on that full range of motion. And by increasing our range of motion, we're actually applying the principles of progressive overload, and we are also increasing our strength and mobility. This is critical for those of us over 50. So for those of you that are maybe doing overhead presses and you're not coming all the way down, or maybe you're not quite all the way squatting, or you're only doing a half rep on your curls, by really bringing that full range of motion and not stopping here, but all the way down, we can really increase our progressive overload just by increasing our range of motion. Now, another tip I really, really like for progressive overload is slowing our reps down. So if we're gonna use the example of our dumbbell curls, as opposed to just cranking those bad boys out, we can come up, squeeze at the top, and get that nice, slow, four, five second eccentric, keeping connected to the muscle at the bottom, keeping that muscle engaged, not relaxing and letting the skeleton take the weight, but keeping those muscles engaged. Again, squeeze at the top and that very slow. We can do the same thing with our squats, right? We have that very slow, controlled, eccentric move movement and that more explosive stand towards the top. Same thing with deadlifts bench presses, et cetera. So really slowing down, especially on the eccentric parts of your exercises can be a great way to manipulate your progressive overload. Okay, so there's a few of my favorite ways to manipulate progressive overload. We started with the very obvious ones, right? All of you should be applying 
those basic principles of progressive overload. You should be trying to get another rep every time you work out uh, with the same exercise or increase the weight, something there. You could, and in fact, you should pay attention to your rest periods in between your sets. Uh, you could work on an increased range of motion, and certainly you can slow those reps down. Those are all ways you can move the needle in a positive direction when it comes to progressive overload. Now, I just want to finish with this. Let's talk about what happens when you plateau. Now, if you're a beginner lifter, you're probably a ways away from your first plateau, but just know that a weightlifting plateau is very natural. It will happen. The longer you lift weights, the more you're going to encounter plateaus. They can be very frustrating. And what happens is, remember we said progressive overloads, we're just going to keep adding weight, keep adding a rep, getting stronger, getting stronger. Unfortunately, that progress is not linear. Otherwise, we would all be infinitely strong, those of us that, that work out all the time. And it just doesn't work that way. So we're going to plateau. So one of the best ways to break out of a plateau after you've tried manipulating some of those other things, slowing down reps, maybe decreasing rest time, working on a different range of motion, but let's just say you're stuck. You're just really not getting anywhere in a specific exercise or maybe even your entire programming. What we want to do now is change this training stimulus. So if you're always working, say, compound lifts and then followed by isolation lifts, and you're always doing three sets of 10 to 15, our bodies are incredibly good at adapting to stimulus, and that is a training stimulus. And even though we are sending the signal of slow progressive overload, over time, those gains are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, meaning our pro progress is going to get slower and slower and slower. So when that happens, it's time to change up the stimulus. So what I like to do with our clients is I will program what I call a hypertrophy block, which typically is going to be, say, 8 to 12, three sets of 8 to 12 reps, or maybe four sets of 10 to 15 reps, but something in that. And that's going to last anywhere from, usually for our clients, going to be from four to eight weeks, right? Depends really on their goal, but that's pretty standard. And then when they hit the end of that training block, they're going to do something completely different. So very typically, after a hypertrophy block, I'll move them into a strength block. So what that means is they were doing three sets of 8 to 12 with a minute rest, and that's all their exercises were, were like that. Well, their next training block, this strength training block, they're going to move to sets of, say, uh, three to six reps with two or two and a half minutes of rest in between their exercises. So it may be even three minutes if we're doing, say, barbell back squats or, or uh, deadlifts, some of those bigger compound lifts, maybe a little bit more rest. So what we're doing is we're sending a novel stimulus to the central nervous system saying, hey, this is, this is new, we have to adapt, we have to rearrange ourselves, we have to restructure our hormones and our biology to be able to to account for this increased work demand, this new work demand, this strength work demand. So I will keep clients there for, let's just say, four to eight weeks again. And then maybe we're going to switch up that stimulus all over again. Maybe we do unilateral training block. Maybe we do a, a high volume block. I love in those high volume blocks. I love throwing in supersets, which are one exercise right after the other and then a rest. So. Uh, just back-to-back -back exercises is what a superset is, or even giant sets where you do th maybe three sets. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that we can manipulate our programming to ensure that we just don't get stuck in a plateau. It's also really healthy for our bodies to switch up. We Again, if you're always doing the same exercises and you're always doing the same set, rep, and rest scheme, that's, that's great, but you're not really getting the most out of your programming. And this is what we call exercise periodization or pro exercise programming periodization. Just a fancy way of saying we're changing up that work stimulus every, in our example here, every say one to two months. So there you go. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please make sure that you hit the like and subscribe buttons below. And please feel free to ask any questions, leave comments below. I'd love to hear from you folks. So that's what I've got for you today. Until next time, stay strong.